Alrighty, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the weekly Outlook webinar. Uh, this is the weekly Outlook webinar for the week of August 5th. Today is Sunday, August 5th. So new month. Just to recap, uh, it has been one month officially since we started the public trade copier. If you guys are not plugged into the trade copier and you are interested in following it and following its performance, I'm going to go ahead and put the link inside of the chat inside of here right now so you guys can, you guys have it. All right, it's in the chat room for you guys. Um, also, if you're watching this replay, the link to this is in the description below. Uh, but this follows the performance and we can see that in the month of July, we finished off about 15%. So uh, you know, this is still in the very early stages of the public trade copier, the monthly average around 8%. Uh, that's above expectations right now. I'm looking to aim around 5% per month, so I'm sure this will average out over time, but I am very happy with the way things are performing. We have a very high profit factor on our trades, very low drawdown on our trades, and just overall some nice steady growth with minimal drawdown. So. Um, if you're interested in getting connected to that, shoot me a message or visit our website. But let's go ahead and get started with today. I just want to go into um, the economic calendar first. And let me just start off by saying that uh, if you guys are new to watching this, please do not be using this information as financial advice. Uh, this is just my opinions, my outlook on the market. It's supposed to be here to assist you guys with your with your you know your own analysis, but please don't be taking any trades based off of what you guys see here. You know, be using 100% your own analysis and your own decision making before getting into trades. It should just be used for educational purposes. So, without further ado, let's get into things, guys. I think this is going to be a really juicy week. Last week was. Um, very eventful just to kind of recap from last week if you guys did not notice last week was very wild we had three interest rate decisions early in the week we had one for the yen up here that you can see um, on Wednesday we had another interest rate decision from the Federal Reserve for the US dollar Thursday we had an interest rate decision from the Bank of England and Friday we had NFP for the US dollar. So last week was pretty wild in the markets. I'm sure you guys saw a lot of all that movement at the end of the week that we're gonna go over in just a moment. But um, getting into this week, it's just really eventful for um, down under. So if you guys are in Australia or New Zealand, there is some interest rate decisions for both countries um, tomorrow. Or, or, well, I'm sorry, the Australian dollar is tomorrow and for the Reserve Bank of Australia. And then we have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand on Wednesday. Um, there's also some more news. We have the Reserve Bank of Australia, Governor Lowe speaking, and some inflation expectations, both high impact news for um, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar Tuesday. So you can see there's some definitely some spread out news for um, Australia and New Zealand. This week also, again, Thursday, Reserve Bank of Australia Monetary Policy, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, on Thursday. Um, so lots of news. There are some high impact uh, US dollar news throughout the week. So be aware of that. We have crude oil inventories on Wednesday. We have PPI on Thursday. And on Friday, we have, un un I'm sorry, CPI and core CPI. And then um, some more news for the Canadian dollar on Friday. So it's a pretty mixed bag. But if you notice, there's just quite a bit for the um, New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar. Um, Let's jump into things, guys. Uh, one announcement, too. I did mean to make this announcement in the very beginning. Um, I'm going to continue to make this announcement every week. And throughout Telegram, you're going to see posts just because I really want to give everybody the opportunity before it is too late. So just another formal announcement that at the end of this month, we are going to be removing our lifetime membership. Um, if you want to learn more about our current pricing, just visit positivetraders.us. But our lifetime membership is no longer going to exist. If you are a lifetime membership, you're going to be grandfathered onto that plan. And you're going to be you know, considered a lifetime member for forever. But um, after August 31st, we will no longer be offering that. So you have until then to get the lifetime membership. And also at the end of this month, we are going to be removing our one month memberships. And so everything beginning September 1st will be 
a, a either a three month membership, a six month membership, or an eight month membership. The pricing will be two forty nine, four forty nine, and eight forty nine accordingly. Um, so our lifetime membership is nine ninety seven. That's on our website, so you can see. You know, obviously, it's pretty undervalued. Um, an undervalued package. So that's why we are going to be removing it. But we are still giving people the next couple of weeks to have that opportunity to become a lifetime member and be locked in for forever. So that's my daily webinars that I do like this every Sunday through Thursday. That's my signals. That's the private group. That's my private trainings and my trade copier, uh, which you would have 0% profit share. So all the lifetime members get 0% profit share. Whereas if you just connect to the trade copier as a free person, as a public, to the public, um, there's a 35% profit share. So you can imagine over being connected to my trade copier doing 15% or, you know, 5% a month over the next five to 10 years, you're going to spend a lot more than the lifetime membership in paying me 35% profit fees, if that makes sense, if you guys do the math. So it's pretty much that's the reason we're getting rid of that but don't want to get too i don't want to <laughs> i just want to give you guys information don't want to be shoving things down your guys' throat so that's out there for you guys just want to be transparent about that but let's get into the juicy stuff going to be giving away a lot of value today guys for free going to be going over um some pairs that i think are gonna you know give some nice moves this week so let's go over the markets Dollar index. Dollar index, we saw a very bullish week last week for the dollar. Um, we also saw the interest rates rise. So the main thing last week that we saw happen on, it was Wednesday of last week? No, Tuesday of last week. Oh, hold on. Wednesday, yeah, it was Wednesday of last week. Okay, so Wednesday of last week, federal funds rate, um, they kept interest rates the same. And we saw NFP very good for the dollar. Okay, so Friday, I'm sorry, very bad for the dollar, um, which we saw some manipulation, which is kind of interesting. So if you guys noticed, um, and this is one reason why I don't trade the news, is because NFP was actually expected to be pretty neutral for the dollar, um, but we saw buying pressure in the dollar. I think some people were expecting to sell the dollar. Um, last week, we were pretty neutral. Pretty much, guys, I'll just be straight up with you guys i'm just watching the dollar index while it's at this major resistance this is the key level to watch we've been watching this level i've been mentioning this support level i've been watching this resistance level overall it's bullish we've been mentioning this trend for a while if you've been following the weekly outlook um and i would expect it to continue bullish i would expect it to break this resistance um, but i'm not interested in buying the dollar yet um, i do think that the dollar will break out of this and continue much higher but there's definitely arguments for a pullback this week you know retesting this resistance one more time um before moving higher but that's my opinion on the dollar index gold um if you guys watched last week's outlook um i said i was bearish on gold if you guys kept up with the daily out of uh, the daily webinars if you're part of the private group i said gold was going to 1200 um, we saw a lot of selling pressure on gold last week with the buying pressure on the dollar. So um, being that I am bullish on the dollar, still expecting the dollar to rise, I would expect gold to continue lower still. I would expect gold to head towards the 1200 zone. Euro USD, I would expect more selling pressure on Euro USD. Um, we saw it really pick up some momentum to the downside last week. If we actually just clear off all of the markers and you just kind of take a look at euro usd from a weekly perspective the overall trend of euro usd is definitely bearish right we've been very consolidated the past um i measured this uh, yesterday and it was 49 days 49 days that we've consolidated been in consolidation and we're looking like we're finally going to be breaking that consolidation and I'm expecting Euro USD to continue falling. So I would expect the dollar to continue strengthening as it did last week, gold to continue to weaken as it did last week, Euro to continue to weaken as it did last week. Um, you'll notice that I don't have them marked. So another thing, if you guys um, haven't been keeping up with the, the webinars, trading view recently made an update where I can like mark off um, certain trades. So I have a couple, couple of, trades that I'm more interested than others, which you can see marked, which we're going to go over in just a moment, but overall bias towards, um, a bullish dollar. 
now there is clearly support if we put in um, all of our trend lines and support zones and whatnot. You can see that we are at a, another major support level. We do need to break this zone, have a significant break through this level for us to um, get aggressive with selling. Um, so there could be an argument for buying, maybe a little bit of a retest, a little bit of a pullback. But ultimately, I think before the week is over, we're going to see last week's lows broken on Euro USD. New lows created this week. USD Swiss franc continues to consolidate to continue to consolidate around parity. Um, overall, the overall trend, right, the opposite of the Euro Euro USD, is bullish, right? Big uptrend if you guys don't follow these two as a correlation you definitely should i highly recommend it euro usd and usd swiss franc move the opposite of each other so if i'm bearish on euro usd you can obviously guess my stance on usd swiss franc it's probably going to move up higher now i do want to address one thing um some of you guys might be saying but david last week you posted in telegram that your downside target was 9,500, right? All the way down here. So I just want to kind of bring that up really quickly. Let me just pull up Telegram very quickly um, and kind of go over exactly what I posted. So that way you guys know what to look for um, on future setups that I share. So let me, let me share. Let's see, how am I going to do this? We're going to do desktop. Okay, you guys should be able to see my whole desktop from here. Um, we're going to go right here and we're going to click USD Swiss franc. Okay, so this is a chart that I posted last week. Obviously, really quickly, you can see that the chart where it is right now, right? This was when the chart was right here. So again, just to recap, um, let's just read what I wrote right at the bottom. You know, it's very careful not to just make assumptions, guys, and it's very... Uh, important that especially if you guys are in my free group where I'm, if you guys notice on Telegram, I'm not very direct, right? I save most of my content. Like in my, in my private group, I literally tell you exact stop loss, exact take profit, you know, exact risk to reward, exact analysis, that type of thing. But I obviously save that for the people that pay, the pay, people that, uh, you know, I, uh, that pay for my time and effort. So in Telegram, you'll notice that I, I just you know, hint little things here and there, <clears throat> we'll give out ideas. So it's very important that if you are in the free group and relying on that, you know, to help with your bias and your analysis that you aren't making assumptions. So you, you definitely have to read everything that I post. I said, definitely, if you read at the bottom right here, definitely where my cursor is, definitely a pair to watch. I said, you have to, you have to understand the words that I use. I said, if we continue to see downside on the dollar index and upside on Euro USD which we saw, we did not see that on either after this post. I said, we'll continue to see downside on this pair. I said strong rejection off parity and breaking significant pair with a eyes emoji. So the way you should interpret this when I post something like this is you should recognize that yes, there's a strong rejection off of parity, which is the 1.0 level, which we've talked about multiple times. It is breaking significant support, but you have to understand the first statement is that if we continue to see downside on the dollar index and upside on Euro USD. At that time, if you go and look at, you know, we're, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't, I don't have to prove myself for every single thing, guys. I know what I, what I do and what I give out, but I'm just trying to help you guys out. Um, so the, so you guys could watch this, but um, on dollar index at the time, that was right around this zone. Um, right when the dollar index was at these lows and the dollar index was at a major support level right at this 50 EMA, um, definitely eyes were on this pair and we did not see further downside on the dollar index and we did not see further upside on Euro USD. So just to be clear, you know, unless you guys are in my private group where you see me updating my bias and my analysis on a daily basis and you guys saw that I changed my bias on this after we clearly saw that this was a fake out and came back inside the zone, you know, you just have to be very careful with what I post if you're not, um, you know, seeing those daily updates. Just make sure, just, just be careful, guys. Okay, that's a big thing. So um, another big form of manipulation last week was the pound dollar. So generally speaking, when interest rates go up, that's usually good for the currency. If interest rates go down, that's usually bad for the currency. I actually went over this and explained this on last week's um, weekly outlook if you didn't get a chance. But 
Thursday, last Thursday, we did see the very much expected interest rate decision um, hike for the Bank of England. They went from a half an interest rate to 0.75%. And generally that should be good, but we saw classic manipulation in um, what I consider a buy the rumor, sell the news type of scenario. Um, we definitely saw it on pound yen. So this was actually this daily candle when we saw this major sell-off and same thing with pound, pound dollar, that major sell-off that was on the day that this interest rate decision happened. Uh, major sell-off. So we, you know, and, and that's why another reason why I don't trade the news um, is because, you know, a lot of people read, you know, a lot of novice traders, they'll look at the news to try to make easy money to try, try to flip an account, right? They'll, they'll put like 500 bucks in an account and be like, oh man, interest rate decision. I know interest rates is good for the currency. It's going up like guaranteed. You know, we saw the forecast seven, we're voting to raise it. So this is basically guaranteed like, man, I'm going to make some easy money on pound yen or on pound dollar and, or just on the pound in general and buy all these pairs up, you know, over leverage my account, buy the crap out of these pairs because they're raising interest rates. Maybe you're even listening to this and you're in the situation. Maybe you did that. And then you ended up blowing your account because there was a classic situation. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Look what happened on pound yen, right? Buy the rumor. We, we saw buying pressure on pound yen all the way up until that news. And then on the news, boom we saw a sell. So really classic manipulation. One of those times when the market makers know that what everybody else sees and they take advantage of that manipulation um, or the majority of, of novice retail traders, I should clarify. So that is exactly why you guys, why you don't trade the news. Um, but getting into the pound dollar and pound yen, pound dollar, I'm not really interested in trading. You'll, let's just get into the nitty gritty stuff, guys. You notice that I have pound yen and dollar yen marked off. Okay really key levels. And I actually had these key levels marked off on yesterday's, I mean, I'm sorry, on last week's weekly outlook as well. But the 144 level, um, I, I said on both dollar yen and pound yen um, to watch these really significant support levels. Pound yen looks a little bit cleaner. Um, if you guys have been following this pair all year, really kind of like the 148 level has been the area we've been watching. And a few weeks ago, we rejected once again off of this zone. Um, after previously rejecting off of the zone. So, and then obviously um, a few weeks before that breaking this major uptrend. So pretty much I, and I've told you guys multiple times that as long as we stayed below 148, we are going to be bearish on, on this pair. If we went back above 148, we'd be looking at buying this pair. So I think we've really gotten uh, started to get some really com confirmation. So I think it's, it's time to start getting aggressive you, or, you know, you can get a little bit more aggressive, not super aggressive, but just more aggressive than normal on selling pound yen. Um, I am targeting the 140 area to begin with. And I'll tell you guys why. Okay. You guys want to know why I'll tell you. All right. Um, where is it? on the monthly? I think yes, on the monthly. Okay, so you guys notice a trend on the monthly. Most of you guys can probably already see it, and it's right around here. You in the beautiful thing about being able to read price action in, in the market is being able to see things like this, and you don't look. I have no, no, nothing on this chart. It's a it's a completely naked chart, and I can already tell you that this pair is going to go down. You can see this pattern. And obviously the major selling pressure being under the 50 EMA and this major selling pressure coming from this major downtrend on the monthly sending back from late 2015. Um, the, the trend is overall to the downside on pound yen on this higher time frame. And I would main thing I'm just looking at and why my target is 140 is if you actually measure this previous drop, right? We have we, very similar price action in the market. The history tends to repeat itself. That's the whole idea about gaining an edge in price action, right? So we have this little formation it actually starts right here, right? With this drop, little two month pullback, a month of dropping, two month pullback. Where do you think we're going? We're probably going to have a month of dropping with this pair. Okay. This month is probably going to be pretty bearish. Mark, mark my words, guys. You heard it. You heard it here first. If you haven't already, no one's already told you that they're bearish on this pair. Um, or why they're bearish. But if we measure this previous month drop, um, it's about 580 pips. Um, honestly, I was just rounding it down to 500 pips. I'm, I'm a more conservative trader. You know, I like to have my targets marginally. So I, I say about 500 pips. Um, or actually, maybe I think I rounded up to 600 pips. I think, yeah, we made it 600 pips. So it's about 600 pips. Oh, that's what it is. If you actually measure the whole width of the candle, 
or I'm sorry, from wick to wick at 750, but the body is just a little bit over 600. So I rounded down to 600. And if you take where the top of this price, right, just simple math, if you go to the top of price from 146 and you go down 600 pips, right, that's or 146.80, that's going to be to about 140.80. Um, and you can see that my target is a little bit above that, um, or actually right about, right, right about at that. So on the daily, we can see that where the 140.80 would be, boom, we made it like right in the middle of this zone. So that is why I'm targeting the 140.80. We're going to have, I think we're going to have about an even, it's pro probably will go even lower than that, but we've been looking for confirmation. We definitely saw a very sharp sell-off on pound yen at the end of last week. Nice rejection off of the 50 EMA once again you know we obviously saw that this is a fake out um, a few week, few weeks ago on uh, on a break of 148 but really just the main level to watch right now is, is this support area um, I think selling around this zone right here or maybe even waiting for a small correction and then selling really anywhere on a pullback with a target at um, 140, 140, 80, which from where we're at, that's about 400 pips still. So you can definitely get a very good risk reward trade on this pair. Um, dollar yen, this pair should probably follow suit. Um, however, we do have this correlation to the dollar index and I'm, I'm pretty bullish on the dollar index right now. So I do have this marked just because I do like this very strong support. If we do break this support, um, we're also going to be breaking the 50 EMA if we if we break significantly through this level um, Our next downside target is probably gonna be around 109 So I'm not too worried to be quite honest with the correlation between this and the dollar index um, If you guys are familiar with correlations sometimes we'll see correlations, you know Very trendy for a very long time. What I mean by that is, you know, you might notice that two pairs correlate positively or um, two pairs correlate negatively, like, you know, almost biblically um, on a regular basis, you know, like religiously, like all the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, for a few weeks or a few months, they just stop correlating, you know, the, they just stop having the same correlation. And we're, we're kind of seeing that right now on the dollar index. Um, obviously, um, last week was pretty bullish for the dollar. And usually when we see buying pressure, we see buying pressure on this pair as well, because when this pair goes up, when it just makes sense, right? When this chart goes up, that's strengthening in the dollar and weakening in the yen. Um, but we actually saw this pair go down last week. So they had a negative correlation, which is interesting. So that's why when I say, you know, if, if you guys are concerned about the correlation, that's the, that's the last thing I'd be concerned about right now. I'd be focused just more on the price action and the support breaking. We have a, just a pretty significant, you know, uptrend with the possibility of, of breaking down here. So something to watch. AUD, USD, and NZD, USD, neither of, of which I am interested in trading. Major consolidation still around their lows. They really haven't moved much the past few weeks. Um, actually, like the past month, to be quite honest. You can see that they have just over a month they've been in consolidation. So super sidelines with those. Um, sidelines with USD CAD also. Um, many of you guys, I don't know if you, many of you guys may not have been here for this, but back earlier this year when we were below 130, um, I called us going all the way up to the 134 area. So you can see that this move um, did go up to our final target of the 134 zone. And uh, since then, we've pulled back to actually we're, we're sitting on a pretty significant trend line. To be quite honest, if anything, if, you're, if you want my bias with this pair, I would be interested in looking for this pair, finding some support and finding potential buys. I don't think it's going to break this trend line. This This trend line, the top side of this descending trend line in this major support is kind of creating this zone right here. Major zone. I think we're probably going to find a reversal in this area. I'm not really seeing any confirmation right now. That would be my stance when I do get confirmation though. So I definitely will tell you I'm not interested in selling USD CAD right now. And just to quickly talk on crypto, take like 30 seconds, like literally no more than 30 seconds. Um, I personally am buying as much Ethereum um, and main coins I can. Ethereum, I know a lot of people are don't like Ripple, but you know, this is what it is. I'm buying, I'm transparent with you guys. I'm buying Ripple as well, buying Ethereum, buying Bitcoin. Um, we're really at some nice lows. 
I really think that this, we have a high probability of being out of bottom. Um, I know some people might think otherwise that we're going to continue lower. Definitely high possibility, right? We've been in a very bearish market. Crypto has been very bearish this entire year. High probability for it to go lower, but at the same time, high probability that this could be a bottoming point for crypto. So again, no financial advice. I'm just telling you guys that I personally, at these lows, I am currently scooping up as much crypto as I possibly can. Um, yep. And I would stay away from, I would stay away from um, like cheap shit coins. Like stick with the majors, guys. Stick with the majors. You know, stick with coins that are in like the top 10. All right. Um, and then CAD yen, just to look at CAD yen, uh, or no, no, I'm sorry, not CAD yen. I'm not interested in either of those pairs. Euro AUD. This is the big thing to talk about. I don't know why I'm talking about this at the very end, but I do appreciate all you guys' attention. Thank you guys for sticking on here. So just to give myself a little bit of credit, um, if we go, oh, I realized I didn't change my screen share, but if we go and look at last week, I posted, you guys should be able to see this. I said, simple confirmation trade, wait for support to break, then sell to the 50% retracement level, which I marked off with this green zone right here at the 156. I said, been watching this pair for a while and scalping the downside. So if you guys are connected to the trade copy or if you're in the private group, you know we've taken like three trades in the past two weeks on Euro AUD scalping the downside before this break. Um, but I have been hinting at downside, expecting downside pair, downside on this pair for a while. I said if and when it breaks, it's going to be a sharp, quick move because of the amount of consolidation we've been in. Let me change my share back really quickly. Make things a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, but I am still bearish on Euro AUD. Uh, if you guys have been following my analysis, I said that this 50% retracement was just the first target, right? Let's look at the big picture on Euro AUD that we have this major uptrend that's been broken and we're, st we're getting that uh, momentum to the downside again, right? Our, our analysis up here is following through very nicely. So, you know, if you missed this move from here to here, don't look at revenge trading the markets, right? We still have this move all the way, you know, potentially back to these lows and maybe even lower than that, right? There's, there's some really big moves to be made on this pair in my opinion. So this is just the first step of a monster, monster fall in my opinion. So Euro USD, very, very bearish. And that's why I have it marked off. So that is that, guys. Um, I think that's enough information for today. If you guys have any questions, absolutely, information is key. No excuse not to learn. These are great webinars. Absolutely, guys. So um, I appreciate you guys' this time. We had literally 20 viewers today. That is so awesome. Um, you guys are awesome. Thank you for, for your guys' support. Um, but again, that's really all, all I've got. Main thing just to keep in mind is that if you're not a part of Positive Traders, you've been wanting to get involved, prices are going up September 1st. You have um, lifetime membership will no longer be a thing. Um, but if you are a lifetime member, you're grandfathered into that for forever. So I went over that in the beginning. If you missed that announcement, watch the replay. But um, I appreciate you guys' time. Drop a comment, like this video if you're watching this replay on YouTube. And other than that, guys, just have a really safe trading week and just, you know, just keep that grind going, guys. It's all about that risk management. And honestly, I'm just going to do this really quickly because we have 20 people here um, and I have just a couple minutes. I want to just do this. If you guys have seen this before, you know, you don't have to stay here, but I just want to just go over this because a lot of people, you guys wonder, you know, what's my end goal? What's my method of trading? What's my strategy? You know, how do I make people wealthy? How have I become wealthy in the four, you know, I wouldn't say wealthy. I don't have millions of dollars, but how have I become built, uh, become a full-time trader and built the ability to, um, travel and do whatever I want, um, through Forex. This is how is by compounding. So some of you guys may not have a lot of money in the markets and you want to know, you know, how can, you know, my, tr my trade copy or even you learning how to trade on your own benefit you. So let's just say, and also another thing is, is you saw my average per month was like 8% right now on the new trade copier, but I'm trying to average 
like around 5% a month. So be super conservative with this. But if you just average 5% a month, right, you don't need to follow all of these hype groups. You know, I see a lot of Forex companies that preach flipping accounts in, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking, you know, if you have, you know, you're, you're, you make an extra X amount of dollars in a month or a year, you know, above your goal and you decide you want to like try to flip that money, you know, extra small money, but your main Forex, your main live account, you should never be, you know, angling at flipping. But if you, so if you can just gain 5% a month on your account consistently month over month, gain 5%, which is not hard to do with the right tools, the right strategy, um, the right risk management, the right risk reward, knowing what to look at, knowing, you know, applying what I teach. But if you start off with even a couple thousand dollars, let's say you started off with like $2,000, you did 5% a month and you did this for the next 10 years, you're going to grow that $2,000 account to $697,000 uh, or yeah, $697,823.97 with just $2,000. Keep in mind, there's no, there's no way for me to add in here. You know, like I'm going to put in another, I'm going to put in $200 every month. You know, I'm going to put in $500 every six months. That's not including adding on to this account and making the, the compounding go faster. Cause if you notice it's really just slow the first couple of years. And this is the thing that, that so many people struggle to and why a lot of people have a hard time seeing success in Forex is because they have a hard time being patient because if you don't have a lot of money to start with, if you don't have initially 30,000 to put in, 40,000, 50,000 to put in, then you have to go into Forex knowing that your first couple years are gonna be slow. You know, if you only have 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, a couple thousand bucks, you have to know that you can't be going with with the idea of wanting to turn 2000 bucks into 100,000 in a year, right? You it's just not going to happen because what's going to happen, I already know at the end of that year, you're probably going to have put at that point 10,000, 12,000 dollars into your account, refunding it every couple months and then blowing it because you're trying to flip your account. The best strategy with the forex market if you don't have a lot of money and I'm just you guys, a lot of people aren't just going to be straight up with you guys. A lot of people want to sell you the pipe dream of turning $2,000 into a million dollars in a year. And I'm here to tell you guys that like, I don't care who follows me. I'd rather have one person follow me that understands the realness rather than have a, a million fake followers where I'm lying to them. Okay. So if you can just keep a realistic goal and you're just real with yourself, you do 5% a month, you know, the first couple of years is going to be slow if you don't have a lot of money, right? Year one, you only have 3,500 at the end of year one. At the end of year two, you only have 6,000, right? At the end of year three, you only have 12,000, right? Your, your account is really slowly starting to build, but you can see that once your account gets like this $10,000 threshold, once your account, see, once you're at 11,000 on year three, you end year four with 20,000. That's a nice, that's a nice $10,000. I'm sure a lot of you guys could use an extra $10,000 um, a year. And then you can see from year four to year five, 48 to 60, you go from 20,000 to 37,000. So that's an extra 17,000. You almost doubled that previous year's income with, with the same percentage, same risk, same 2%, same 1% per trade risk, same very low risk, but having those high returns, right? So this is what it's all about. And then you can just see, you know, skipping forward to, you know, year five to six, for example, 37,000 all the way to, um, 60,000, right? So now you made 23,000. So now you're starting to really make some money. So hopefully you guys understand this example. That's, that's the point I'm just trying to make is that Forex is long-term and you have to let things compound. But if you guys are interested in learning more, you want to talk to me on a personal basis, shoot me a message on social media. I appreciate you guys' time and I'll see you guys next week on the weekly outlook. Have a great week guys. Take care.